Um, I can't hear you. So go ahead and I'm started the recording now. Um, so like I said, I am Harrison Turner. I um, work for Kimley Horn, which is a consultant for the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure. Uh, this is the Neighborhood Street Traffic Calming Meeting for Lake Parkway on February 5th, 2024 at 6 p.m. And this is a virtual meeting that is recorded and we posted um, online for people to view after the fact. Um, we have a couple of people per, um, from the community that are attending virtually. Feel free to ask any questions as we go along. You can also drop them in the chat and I'll read them and answer them as I go. We also have a time at the end for questions as well. So I'll be happy to answer anything as we go through. Um, so to start off, we're just gonna start it with what is traffic calming? Um, the neighborhood street traffic calming program focuses on residential streets. We focus on physical solutions, trying to encourage lower speeds over significant leaks. And the main point of the traffic calming program is speed reduction trying to make sure that we have safe streets for all the users. So the way we do this is through the three E's. The first E is education. That's things like this presentation, um, educating people on the dangers of uh, speeding and going too fast for the road classification uh, and going too fast on a multimodal neighborhood street. The second E is enforcement. This E is handled by our great partners with the Metro Nashville Police Department. Um, that is all in their court and they do a great job with the resources they have uh, trying to help us out with the enforcement aspect of traffic calming. And then the third E, which is near and dear to my heart as a traffic engineer, is the actual engineering. It's things we can do from an engineering side uh, to try to engineer the road to make it safer and slower for vehicles to allow vehicles to still pass through efficiently, but at a slower, safer speed for all users. And the reason we do this is part of our vision zero, which is the vision that we have zero deaths on our streets and safety is really the heart of what we're doing. Uh, as you can see on screen, or if you're on the call, I'll explain at 45 miles per hour, if a vehicle strikes a pedestrian, that pedestrian only has a 35% chance of surviving that accident. Whereas at 25 miles per hour, that pedestrian has an 89% chance of survival. So as you can see, speed is a huge factor on the outcome not only for the pedestrian, but also for the vehicle, um, any bike or anything that happens to get hit. If it's done at a slower speed, the chances of everybody walking away safely um, from that accident is higher. So this is a very high demand um, program that NDOT has. We've had over 500 applications um, as of August, 2023. And this street was part of the summer 2023 selection where we were able to select 85 neighborhood streets and you are one of the 85 streets that we selected if you have anything outside of the neighborhood street traffic calming program hub nashville is a great resource um, for you to be able to tell metro about your needs i personally have used it to fix sidewalk in front of my house it's great you got you can call 311 you can put it in online at hub.nashville.gov they also have an app if you want to use it from your smartphone, which is nice because you could take a picture of it with your phone and then upload it to the app as an attachment um, so they can know exactly what you need. Um, but that's a great resource as well. If there's anything outside of traffic calming that you need to alert Metro um, about. So the way we picked your street and those 85 from those over 500 streets that were applied for is through this uh, traffic calming prioritization matrix. And here on screen, you can see 45% of the matrix comes from vehicular speeds, and that is measured with speeds over 25 miles per hour. The next biggest chunk is volume. Then you also have vulnerable users, which are injuries, fatalities, um, non-driver accommodations, and then to round it out, we have trip destinations, uh, places that people would most likely want to walk to, schools, churches, restaurants, that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of how we determine of all the people that apply, who needs traffic calming the most and how we select which streets really need it the most and are gonna be able to go into the program with the funding that we have. So a little data about your street. This is Lake Parkway from Old Hickory Boulevard to uh, Port Anna Darko Trail. Uh, this is the end of the loop. I know it does cross twice. Uh, the 85th percentile speed, that speed characteristic is 39 miles per hour, which is really high for a neighborhood street. Um, there's a volume of a little over 1,200 vehicles uh, per day. 
and then the street is pretty wide at 38 feet there is some uh on street parking that has been uh striped out so that's really where that width comes from but from edge of pavement to edge of pavement it's 38 feet uh you can see on the map lake parkway is highlighted it's the uh yellow highlighted line with the green underneath i mean the green means it was selected um, and it does go all the way from Old Hickory to Port Anadarko Trail. So the way we engineer traffic calming is we use uh, tools that are in our toolkit. So I'll kind of go through the, the tools that we had to pick from, and then I'll go into what we uh, are proposing for your street. So the first tool, and this is really our bread and butter. It's our most used tool. It's what we know really has a great effect on getting speeds down to that safe calm range. And so that, that's the modular rubber speed cushions. Um, these are six feet wide. We can bury the links between seven and 14, and they're three inches tall. They're rubber. You can go over them at a nice, safe, comfortable speed um, without really much shock to your vehicle. Um, but they do require you to go them, over them at a safe speed, and they're what we have that's proven to work to really get the speeds down to a safe environment for everybody. Another um, tool we have that's very similar is the speed tables. The difference between this and the speed cushions is they do not have the gaps. Um, the reason you have the gaps on the speed cushions is for emergency vehicles, ambulances, and fire trucks. Uh, they're able to go over the speed cushions a little faster and get to the emergency a little faster than a table. Um, so we do have these. We use them on occasion, although we do prefer the speed cushions most of the time. And really, they, they do work. We have some data to show. Uh, these are actual sites in Davidson County where before the average speed was 31 miles per hour and then after the installation of vertical measures, these cushions and tables, we were able to get them down to 22 on average and that 85th percentile speed, which is the engineering speed that we look at, it was at 37, which is very similar to the 39 that y'all have on your street and it was able to go down to 25. Uh, so they do work, they do cause a speed a drop of around 10 miles per hour. Um, and that's why we like them so much is they're proven, proven tools we have. Other tools, uh, the radar feedback signs, they're able to flash your speed of, along with a speed limit sign. They do have a reduction of about six miles per hour on average speeds and seven on the 85th, um, just alerting drivers that, hey, you are speeding and you need to slow down. That feedback does actually slow, slow down speeds by about five to seven miles per hour. Another thing we have um, is the narrowing with the pavement markings, those white edge lines, bringing them in, making drivers feel a little bit less comfortable as they drive, which promotes a slower speed, even though we're not necessarily taking away any pavement. That is a, it's a good tool for us to have to be able to just cause a visual cue that, hey, you need to slow down. Another tool we have are bulb outs and chicanes. Uh, bulb outs are what you see on the left. That is when you take away some of the extra space you have in a very wide intersection. What it does is it makes cars take sharper turns at the intersection, which requires them to slow down a little more and they're not able to just blast through an intersection at a high speed. They have to really slow down and think about the movement. Chicanes are what you see on the right. They're typically used in conjunction with parking where you cause a horizontal deflection of the lanes. So, um, cars can go around and horizontally deflect, and that creates a slower traffic pace because you can't do the horizontal deflection at a fast speed safely. So those are two tools we have as well, typically on wider roads where we can kind of straddle on street parking back and forth. Another tool we have, this is really good for wide intersections or traffic circles, that once again, they go on the horizontal deflection. So they deflect cars around the circle, which makes them slow down as they go through intersections. So going into your particular um, street, Lake Parkway, we were able to um, come up with a design or a concept currently that has six sets, six sets of cushions proposed. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, there are three between the stop signs at Old Hickory and the first stop sign on Port Anadarko Trail. And then there's three again between the two Anadarko Trails. Um, and they're spaced um, in accordance with um, our guidance for traffic calming and the cushion locations. So um, the schedule for traffic calming, it starts out with an application. 
a resident's apply. There's two cycles per year. Then it goes through the prioritization and the selection. That's where we go and get all the data on all the um, eligible applications. And we go through that prioritization matrix that I talked about earlier. The next step is this neighborhood meeting. That is what we're having right now. Um, it's advertised through mailers where we give an overview of the program and go through every all the steps of the neighborhood street traffic calming program. Um, after this meeting, what we'll do is we'll go into a field review and really refine that concept, get a detailed design. Um, and then if you want, we can go to a second meeting. If you'd rather just skip that and go straight to the ballot, we can go to a balloting process where we'll send out mailers and then there'll be a six week window for y'all to vote. Um, and assuming there is a 66% positive vote, we would then move into construction. And the construction right now, due to backlog and uh, contractor availability and things of that nature, um, it's about eight to 10 months from a ballot being uh, from a ballot being successful to actual installation and construction. There is a large queue of streets um, and there is a limited amount of material and contractors to actually do the work. We are working on shortening that down. We've recently had some good success with uh, bringing on some other um, other avenues for us to get these installed, but it is currently about an eight to 10 month process. So what the ballot looks like uh, is very similar to the mailer that we sent you. It'll have a QR code or a website, and then there's also a phone number you can call. Um, and then each ballot will have an individual ID so that everybody can only vote once. Uh, voting is open from six weeks. There'll be a date on the ballot that tells you when you have to vote by, and you simply can vote yes or no. We need 66% of people to vote yes. That is 66% of people that vote, they have to vote yes. So if there's 10 people that vote on your street, we need seven yeses. Um, if there's 100 people, then we need 66 yeses. Um, it's not how many ballots we send out, it's how many people actually vote. Um, the people that are eligible to vote are anybody that owns frontage, on Lake Parkway for these limits. Um, it's residential properties, churches, and schools. Everybody gets one vote. Um, if you own multiple properties, you still only get one vote. Um, vacant properties do not get a vote and businesses do not get a vote. So it is people that own property on Lake Parkway. And there's a map on, on screen um, that shows who, who gets a vote and who doesn't, highlighted in yellow. So um, I know it's pretty short. That's the end of the presentation. Um, there is my emails on on screen right now, harrison.turner at kimleyhorn.com, uh, kimley-horn.com. And then there's also the NDOT traffic calming at nashville.gov. If you have any questions after this presentation, feel free to email either me or NDOT traffic calming at nashville.gov. Um, but I can go back and go through any questions at this point that y'all may have or anything well, that y'all want to go over again. Yes, uh, this is Jason. Uh, I definitely want to go over a couple of things. One, uh, the study they did when they brought out the uh, the machine that measured the speeds, um, they actually brought that out, uh, according to Aaron and someone from NDOT who brought it out, they said they were supposed to bring it out for seven days. It was only here for three days. They brought it out when it was raining and then it the the rain froze on the ground so it that 39 miles per hour was actually the average of how fast the cars were going on an icy road so and then they <laughs> and then they brought it and then they took it out after three days and i told aaron they said it was going to be here for a week even if it was a work week it's five days it was here for three and they got it and really two and a half because they brought it halfway through one day and and took it up halfway through another day or something but anyway um, so that was one i wanted to make sure i definitely wanted to comment there that that 39 miles per hour is very low we have cars going through here 50 60 miles an hour a lot of the time um the speed cushions the only thing i'm worried about is is it is a wide road as you mentioned 38 uh but um, I don't want them, you know, the cars around here, I'll sit on my front porch and watch the cars with nothing in the road and they're, they almost hit my mailbox. They're off the side of the road and that's without any cushions. 
So they're definitely used to driving on the sides of the road. Um, Absolutely. And, um, uh, I think the, I don't know, you, you said they were planning on doing the, the cushions. Are they planning on doing any of the other things you talked about? Like the, the radar, we have two speed limit signs that say 25 miles per hour. Uh, one of them is right there when you come off of Oh Hickory Boulevard onto Lake Parkway. The other 25 miles per hour is on Port Jamaica on the back entrance into the, into the, uh, the neighborhood. And it's like as soon as you turn on the road. So if you're trying to look and make sure you don't hit anybody, you miss that speed limit sign. Oh, yeah. So the fact that we don't have, but the two, there's another one at the very top of Port Anadarko that nobody ever passes. I don't know even why it's up there. Uh, it's at the end of Lake Parkway, all the way down, all the way at the end. And I'm like, that's the traffic kind of goes through, you know, from O'Hickory Boulevard and then goes out Port Anna, or uh, Port Jamaica. So no traffic goes up at the top of the hill up there. Um, the second thing is, is we have 30 miles per hour painted on multiple places in the neighborhood on the ground. There's more of those than there are speed limit signs. So of course everybody, even though they don't pay attention to that either, it looks like the speed limit is 30 miles per hour, but the signs say 25. And literally my daughter was coming in the neighborhood and she's like, this doesn't make any sense. And because her and her boyfriend were arguing, what is the speed limit? It says 30 on the ground, but it says 25 on the side. So the one, just having the speed limit on the ground painted over, I think really needs to be discussed. I don't know if you guys or NDOT does that or what, but it's confusing. You have, I mean, they're right beside each other. It says two different speed limits. Um, and what else was it? It was something else. Um, we need, I would like more speed limit signs or uh, one of these uh, radar feedback signs I think would be absolutely great to have if we could have a couple of those in the neighborhood. Um, another thing is if you look at the stop sign right in the middle, that's a four way stop that maybe half the people actually stop at. Uh, we've had multiple <laughs> neighbors almost get hit there. I don't know if that intersection is wide enough to try to put some kind of 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 traffic circle there. I don't think it is, but you know, there's there's going to be a according to your graphic here, there's going to be a speed bump before that and a speed bump after that, but I I just I don't know if cars are just going to like as soon as they go over that speed line, limit or speed bump or speed cushion, they're just going to gun it and go right through that stop, you know, that four way stop. We've had multiple people almost get hit, and people who almost hit them will get out of their car and start screaming at the people who almost got hit like they did something wrong, you know? Um, so it's those are some of the feedback I have. Uh, I'm glad to see that y'all have six. I was, I was really hopeful that you'd do at least two. So six of them is awesome. Um, and, uh, I'm not worried about the vote because, uh, I'm the president of the HOA and we already sent out a letter saying who's in favor of trying to get speed bumps. Who's not, we had 27 people voted 26 voted. Yes. One person voted no. So I'm really not worried about trying to get to a 66 percentile. We were already at 90 something percentile when we checked earlier. Perfect. Um, so. Let me go ahead. Um, so I, I took down some notes as you were talking, so I'll try to go back through um, and answer as as we go. So the first thing about the counts is uh, we typically do 24 hour counts for our um, our streets, and that is engineering standard um, to do a 24 hour count on a typical day. So that's a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday um, with standard weather and standard schools are in session, no holidays, that sort of thing. Um, it is odd that it had freezing rain. I know we do some counts during the winter months trying to get them in, obviously not over the Christmas holidays, but as close as we can, um, where it is still considered a standard day. Um, so the fact that it's 38 or 39 miles per hour and you're saying that was a bad weather condition, that just means that we need this even more. Um, definitely. As far as not enough signs go, um, that's definitely something we can look into, adding a couple of signs. It seems like it's something that's really necessary based on um, 
what you're telling me about this. And as I said in the schedule, we've got two months of the design phase where we'll go through out in the field, um, really take measurements, and everything, and make sure everything's in place and it is standard um, for the street of that characterization. And that kind of goes into the 30 miles per hour on the street. We need to make sure that that's not um, conflicting with what that sign data is. So that is something we can we can look into taking care of. Um, of probably either blacking blacking out the 30 miles per hour or something of that nature. Just make sure that we're not sending conflicting data because that is leads to driver confusion, which is bad for everybody. Um, the <laughs> intersection treatment at uh, Port Anadarko, we had not looked into doing a traffic circle yet. Um, that is definitely something we can look into, and I will get our team um, to see if traffic circle, bulb out, something of that nature um, we yeah. can do there. We had talked about, I don't, I, I mean, traffic circle would be great. I don't think it would fit. Um, but we had also talked about like a raised crosswalk at that intersection or something of that nature as well. That would also make people slow down at the stop sign as well. But right now, I know the number one things is the speed cushions like y'all have already got designed. They're needed. So I didn't know. At what process so during the design phase i'm sure if y'all are out here hopefully y'all realize that if you spend if you stand away from the four-way stop and just watch it for 15 minutes you're going to see three or four cars just go right through it and not stop so hopefully when you're out here with the design phase you can actually see that so absolutely yeah we'll have um we'll have our staff out there um like I said, watching traffic, taking measurements, making sure that we're good with everything um, as we define that design. And it is a pretty wide intersection. Not sure if it's traffic circle wide, um, but potentially bulb outs or something of that nature could help um, make it a little bit narrower and slow traffic down some through that intersection. Um, the last thing I have um, was you talking about the widths where people currently drive um, near the edge of the road. We do have different cushion configurations where we can go more than just two across um, three, four, if needed. Um, I think we've even done five in one location to make sure that we're going all the way to edge of pavement to edge of pavement. And then we also look at the roadway characteristics. Um, is there a curb? Is there a ditch? Is there just a shoulder people can drive around the cushions on um, to make sure that we're accounting for all of that in our design and putting up the right uh, materials to make sure that people have to stay in the lane and go over the cushions to really slow that down. Because uh, we put these out there and people just go around them. It doesn't do anybody any good. So that's, uh, I think that was what I had written down um, from your questions. Is there anything I missed? Uh, no, I think some of, some of those were statements and, and definitely you answered all of those. Um, I think we're just going to have to be in a wait and see when your design team gets out here. Because uh, this isn't, there's nothing you're telling us in concrete now. Y'all still have more phases to go. Um, Correct. You know, and you know, hey, we'll throw a picnic for you guys if y'all want to show up earlier than eight to ten months. So. <laughs> we we're doing doing the best we can. We've had a lot of a uh, lot of different ideas and discussions amongst uh, the consultants and amongst NDOT, um, the contractors about how we can get these things moving faster. Um, we kind of got in a hole with uh, material shortages over the past couple of years, and we're still really digging ourselves out of it. Is to be honest, that's really what happened. Um, so we're, we're digging quickly, but we're still digging. I have a question, Mr. Turner. Um, yes. Yvonne Hamilton, uh, on these pads that you're going to put down, um, I guess my concern is if someone hit them at a normal rate of speed that they're going now, <laughs> is it enough? Is it enough to make that vehicle turn over or to do whatever? And I say that because. I'm right there before the first stop sign and literally late at night, they are doing at least 60 to 70 straight down this road. Mm -hmm. so, so since the middle of December, I think we've had three wrecks at that four way stop as well. So, I mean, and, and not, not just cars. We have, we have a special person on a motorcycle that comes through at a high rate of speed every night, you know, so. I'm a very light sleeper and I hear him every night. So they don't go all the way to the end of Lake Parkway. They're cutting through Port Jamaica, but coming through the stop sign from O'Hickory Boulevard, they're just straight down through it. OK, 
Gotcha. Um, so for 70 miles an hour, I'm not, I don't have a study that says that it'll, the car will stay, uh, be okay. But at standard speeds, even above standard speeds, um, it's very, very uncomfortable to try to go over these. Um, but it shouldn't shoot a car off the side of the road. Um, you'd have to really, I don't actually know how fast you'd have to be going, but it'd be very fast to, to shoot a car off the side of the road. It would be very uncomfortable for the driver and may, um, you know, not be great for the car with the suspension and might even drag a little bit with the bumper, but and if you'd it's get the, that before if it's, you shoot off. Also, if it's the cushions and it's a motorcycle, that's probably not going to deter him because he can go between them unless they end up deciding to do the speed tables instead of the speed cushions. So we do prefer the, uh, the cushions over the tables, like I said, for emergency vehicles. Uh, the gap between the cushions is pretty narrow. Um, so you, if you want to try to shoot the gap, you'd have to be a pretty skilled motorcycle driver to be able to do that um, and not, you know, hit the, uh, foot, the foot pedals and things on the sides of the cushions. Um, it'd be pretty, pretty daunting to try to do that at a fast speed. Um, but we do, we do try to stick with the cushions where, where we can because of, like I said, the emergency vehicles. The last thing we want is somebody to have a fire or a medical emergency in an ambulance or fire truck be delayed getting to them. That's been a, a concern in the past that we, we definitely, um, we have, it's less so now, but when we moved in, uh, uh, a few years back, uh, the we had over half of our our homeowners in the neighborhood. Uh, the average age was probably in their fifties, and that was including some people who bought a house and were still in their twenties. I mean, we have a lot of people who are in their nineties across the street. Uh, my neighbors in the nineties, and right next door to me, uh, he's in his nineties and she's in her late eighties. So, um, but it's turned over. So that average age of homeowners in our neighborhood has probably dropped now and probably into the forties because we've had so many younger people moving into the neighborhood, but we still have quite a few, uh, Same. elderly people in the neighborhood who, um, uh, and I'm not pointing any fingers, Yvonne, um, uh, but we have quite a few, uh, you know, elderly people in the neighborhood and we have uh had emergency vehicles uh i think this last week we had uh some police cars and uh just a couple weeks ago we had fire trucks and i don't know how many over the last year we probably probably had ambulances in our neighborhood 15 or 20 times you know what i mean so that is definitely something that we also understand and care about um and as i see on here your speed cushions and speed tables are very well marked, so nobody should be surprised. We have, one thing we do make sure is we're paying for these street lights. So it is a pretty well lit street. So coming up to these street cushions or or street tables, whatever y'all, you know, figure out during the design phase, what, what is the best option? It should be very visible for anybody not to accidentally wreck because they didn't see it, so. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we have this, the speed cushion signed. Um, if we have, uh, things between them drive or, you know, cross streets, things like that, we'll have them signed, uh, between all those, you never see one without having a sign. If there is a longer stretch, um, without any cross streets, we might have a speed cushions ahead sign, um, with a couple of cushions just to make sure you're not, or just to not have a sign at every set, but they're very easy to see. They've got the white reflective, um arrows on them as you can see if you have one on the center line we do put a yellow center line striping on it but the ones on the side also have the white reflective arrows um so they're pretty hard to hard to miss so that's a good comment yeah and i believe that is all i wish uh aaron would have texted me any questions she had but i'm sure uh she'll have your contact information so if she needs to get a hold of you um and um, I guess I don't know how many people were on here. Um, I'm I'm seeing four, uh, myself excluded. Um, and I I have been uh I sent this presentation to uh the council member, uh yeah. this morning, uh just alerting 
them that we were going to have the presentation. This is what we we're going to be go going over. So we have been in communication. Um, hit your little red speaker button. Sorry, one of those people is my husband wanting to know how to come off mute. Oh, you're on the phone. Well, I see you here. Do you want to just come talk on my phone? He had a question for you. I'm sorry. He can't figure out how to work his phone. I will say the meetings are a little more difficult yeah, on hey, the phone. Uh, James Blakely, the question that I have uh, is, well, I've got two questions. One, what is the maintenance and upkeep for these, uh, the speed cushions? You know, is this something that has, is, is pretty durable? Is it going to, is it going to, does it run out after, does it fall apart after a certain amount of time? So um, we have the manufacturer's warranties um, and we make sure that we design all of our streets to meet those manufacturer warranties. Um, and that is done in lengths of years. Uh, they do eventually wear out just because they are rubberized. I mean, the road itself wears out and that's asphalt. Um, so they do wear out, but it's a it, it's multiple years before they wear out. And NDOT does have, um, does have extra that they're constantly ordering and installing if they do ever. Uh, do ever need to be replaced. If you ever notice any signs of deterioration as far maintenance as needed, you can always put it in with Hub Nashville or comment to the NDOT traffic calming and we'll get contractors out to replace them. Um, so they do wear out eventually like any any material, but it, it is over a course of several years. So for the speed tables, which are concrete, right? Uh, they're both modular rubberized. Um, I'll go oh, to okay. the tables. So you can see them. Um, the difference between the two really is the gaps for the ambulances and fire trucks. Um, they're very similar otherwise, um, but they're those modular rubberized devices. Um, and like I said, they they should have several years of use um, before they need to get replaced. Um, I don't have the exact spec in front of me, but I, I would assume around uh, five to ten would be on the low side. Okay, and then. Um, do does do you guys or does NDOT whenever they start a project, which I know you said it'd be eight to ten months after voting or or whatever, do y'all give like any kind of a heads up to a neighborhood like you know vertical speed calming to be installed next week? Is there any kind of or do y'all just show up one day and start it? Um, so that is a great question, and I don't have the exact answer in front of me. Uh, I can definitely get with our um, the people at NDOT that are in charge of the installation. Uh, I personally am in charge of the design of these. Um, so we get the design done and then we hand it to our, our people that are in charge of the installations. I would assume that they will be um, not only in contact with the community, but also in contact with the council member. Um, but I will okay. definitely double check on that. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, that was a great question. Absolutely. Um, so going back to the concept currently, I know we've got a couple of things to look at, particularly the intersection at Port and at Arco. Um, I am saying that correctly. Yes. Right? Perfect. Yeah. Um, well, if you're wrong, I've been wrong too. So. <laughs> I've, I've been wrong before. It doesn't happen often, but uh, that's not true. My wife says it happens a lot, but <laughs> hey, I got to laugh. I'm good with that. Yeah. All right. Um, is there any other... <laughs> Uh, traffic calming related questions that I can answer for you at this time. Um, if not, like I said, my email and uh, I'll just go ahead and pull that up. My email and the NDOT traffic calming email are on the screen, but anything else I can go over at this time? All right. Hearing nothing, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and stop sharing screen. And uh, thank you all for being such a great. Uh, Great audience, and uh, thank you for um, y'all's uh, desire to have a great, safe community. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it.